Welcome back to the Lady's Choice. After a little while, I hear him give a small sigh. You're bored with walking already? It's not the walking, it's the crowds. He leans closer, his voice hushed, and I roll my lips at his easy intimacy in such an open setting. I feel so constrained in such public venues. If only we had a chance to speak alone, Miss Bennet. Oh my, what would you want to speak to me about? Alone? Everything is so rigid when amongst people. I wish to speak to you as though in the comfort of our own home. I'm unsure how to respond to such a statement. Maybe I could come to your house and visit you so we can speak privately? Ah, my apologies, Miss Bennet. I realize now how scandalous that must have sounded. My meaning was much more innocent than you may now think. I'm sure it was, Mr. Amsbury. Yet I am pleased you cannot hear how fast my heart beats in my chest. His gaze holds mine for the longest moment, until we almost collide with a couple in front of us. He gives a light laugh, and we return to our task, enjoying the quiet, the quiet company of each other. A while later, Mr. Amsbury excuses himself to check on Mr. Montfort, his obvious worry not truly settled for his friend. And with the Colonel leaving us also, it's only Arabella and I left at the end of the evening to walk home. I wonder if we'll run into the swindler, the one who only shows up after dark. I feel as if I've barely had a chance to speak with you this afternoon, Catherine. It's all it's quite all right, I had good company. As I can see, Mr. Amsbury is very attentive. As was the Colonel to you, I noticed. Yes, well, he's a true gentleman. My chuckle echoes down the empty street, the happy sound striking against the consuming darkness. I do believe we have been most blessed this season with our company. And what great happiness it brings to see you smiling so much, Catherine. Mr. Amsbury may be far more liberal on his thoughts than I would like, but his affections seem truly genuine. He is certainly unlike any man I've met before. And that's probably why he's caught your fancy so thoroughly. You can hardly find a man of such intellect and interest in the subdued houses of the country. Your headstrong nature seems to have only attracted Mr. Amsbury further, rather than sending him skittering away like most weak-minded men do when meeting you. Oh, that's why men don't like me. I'm too... too strong-willed? Uh, yeah, yeah, well, you know what? I don't mind being headstrong, okay? That is not a defect. I'm glad you finally met someone who can match you on that count. I pull her closer and we smile at each other, my appreciation for her having forced me into the season this year clear on my face. She's kind enough not to say anything in response. What's that? The swindler! I knew it! I knew it! Haha! <laughs> Good evening, ladies! The society swindler gives an exaggerated bow, tipping his hat to us as he stands to look at us once again. You've already taken from us once, what could you possibly hope to steal now? He barely acknowledges Arabella's angry retort, his gaze glancing through the shadow to find mine. He shuffles a step closer, so as Arabella is forced to move aside. I swallow hard, once again wishing that I was from fear rather than excitement. That is quite the hat, my lady. Oh, almost as fabulous as yours, sir. He gives a loud laugh, and I frown at the familiar sound of it but I barely get a chance to hear it over the rush of blood through my body. I am almost tempted to let you pass for that comment. But alas, I cannot be quite that charitable. I reach towards my hat, only to find the swindler stepping closer. Do not trouble yourself. He slips the gun into his belt, the metal gleaming in the light of the oil lamp. Now then... His hands move towards me, and I instinctively flinch away. He withdraws a little at my motion. You need not fear me. I flicker my gaze up to meet his, though he's too heavily shadowed to make out fully. There's truth in his words, a strange seriousness that hangs on his tone. I will never hurt you. I frown for a moment before giving a small nod of my head without even meaning to. He moves his hands back towards me and I try not to gasp as he touches the bare skin of my neck. His fingers slowly trace over my skin, leaving a trail of warmth as they move. I do my utmost to ignore the reaction his touch evokes for me, and instead keep my expression as steady as I possibly can. 
He pulls the hat pin from the bottom of the hat, and I can feel his gaze upon me, as though it were the heat of the midday sun. In silence, he pulls the other pin from the top, and the hat flutters from my head. He catches it with ease. The brim of his large hat glances over my hair as he leans towards my ear. You are most obliging, my lady. Indeed, you are my most favorites of patrons. Patron? What else would you prefer I call you? I cannot see his eyes beneath his hat, but I can hear the teasing in his voice. I press my lips into a tight line before I say something I may regret. Think on an answer, won't you? I'm most certain we'll meet again. <laughs> he takes a wide step back, and I take a deep breath. Enjoy the rest of your evening. He waves goodbye with my own hat before disappearing down an alleyway and is lost to the shadows. Not nearly as romantic as last time, no, no, not at all. Catherine! Arabella rushes back to my side, and I'm ashamed to realize I'd forgot she was standing nearby. He did not hurt you? She asks the same question, but I can hear there's less worry in her voice than the last time this happened. I'm unharmed. I tell you, Catherine, I do not care for the way he seems to have singled you out! I will have to tell Ernest of this. We shouldn't worry. Come now, let's get home to the safety of bed. The mere excitement, uh, the excitement and nerves from the moment before drain away at the mere mention of sleep, and I give a tired nod. She takes my arm, and we wander down the street, my thoughts lingering once again on the masked stranger. Who is he? Why does he look so much like Mr. Amsbury? I don't know. Why is he all, you know, laughing all the time and making jokes just like Mr. Amsbury? I don't know. Why does my heart beat faster whenever he's around? Just like whenever I'm around Mr. Amsbury? I don't know! I'm totally confused! I, I, I have no idea what's going on. Sleep finds me quickly that night, though my dreams are a whirlwind of masks and shadows. And thankful Arabella has canceled her plans for the next day, concerned it would be too much for me to bear after the night before. Are you sure I cannot tempt you to more tea, Catherine? I shake my head and smile as she comes towards me, bearing a teapot like a cure-all potion. Just barely let me be all, m all morning. Please, please sit down. Arabella. I take the teapot from her and place it on the table before pulling her to sit beside me. You've barely taken any rest yourself. Please sit down. Johnson instantly shuffles in to take the tea things away, seeming a, a little comfier at no longer having his duties overtaken by Arabella. You're kind to think of me when it is you who must be so overcome by what happened. I just want any uneasiness over last night to be settled. You need not worry about such a thing. I'm unaffected. I shiver at the memory of the swindler's fingers against the sensitive skin of my neck, but quickly shake it away. I know that, and I do not think he wishes violence against you. But I'm still concerned over his favoring you in such a way. I cannot believe it is a good thing to catch the eye of any man such as he. I promise you it was not my intent to do so. I know, but it still seems to have happened. You are more than ever. You are more than even my family could be to me, Catherine. I just wish for you to be safe and happy. Her brow creases in seriousness, and I cannot help but be warmed by her heartfelt sentiment. I place my hands on hers and smile, hoping to relieve some of her tension. Oh, enough of all that. Come, let's eat. She reaches for the breakfast tray, only the frown as her gaze passes over the newspaper. There's an article on the Society Swindler, main page. Oh, I should have hidden this. I apologize. There's no need! I have a good friend who works at this paper. I should contact him and tell him to stop writing such gossip laden stories. Before I can respond, a knock sounds at the door.